is crazy right now. Like, this is probably the first time that I've lived through something that really felt like a movie with like the coronavirus. And all oh that. yeah, for sure. Like just seeing the news and all that, like people one at a time in the supermarkets, like what's all gonna happen in the US now? Cause we're huge. Dude, it's, it's wild. And just like from a student body perspective, what is it like being a student here where um, something like this is directly impacting your, your day to day? I always think about like people calling like Generation Z and all that, like these softies and all that. And, like I read about the Great Recession and like United States and all that, and how this kind of seems like that's it's about to happen. The everything's going down, everyone's freaking out. Yeah. So I think it's time for people to like it's the man up and stuff. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, um, the most recent example of how this has kind of affected our day to day was even last night against Brookfield Central in a limited capacity. Only six tickets per, five tickets per five? Five tickets, so like 40, I mean 75 pe- fans per side, which it was kind of unfortunate because yeah. even win or lose, it was, was going to be our last game, and we, kept, we knew that. But it was kind of sad to know that everyone, that you work so hard in the gym when no one's watching that the point of the games are to ball out and hopefully get as many people there to watch you through like that hard work you put in, but they limited that, which was like a major aspect of the game was taken out. Mm. But it was a small gym. So even though it was lesser of a crowd, I felt like it still got loud at times. Oh, there was for sure energy and the parents and the students who we made sure to pick family members first and then specific students that could really be loud and and obnoxious, so. Like Jack here. Yes, yes. (laughs) Perfect, perfect. Yeah, it was really cool just watching you guys as somebody who had built a relationship with a lot of you through the football field, um, seeing you come out and the chemistry that you had on the basketball floor all year was unique. And it's not always like that. And um, what's that like when you play with other people, classmates of yours, best friends of yours for, gosh, probably, what, six, seven years now? It's, uh, I, for Sam McGath, he just scored a 1,000 points. Like, we've been... We played basketball since first grade upwards. Sheesh. And then I met Michael P- Poker at church class, second grade. And ever since then, we've been the, the trio. And then having my brother a year younger, he's kind of been then like that side guy that yeah. we tag him along, not always liking him there sometimes. <laughs> but once we hit the fourth and fifth grade, we were playing all these games, playing two on two baseball, basketball. Wow. And then that's just, then we got to middle school, Brady started joining in us. And then Luke's friends became one big knit group, and it's you don't play for yourself anymore. You play for the people around you. Your family. Yeah. It's it's your family, and it's something straight out of a movie. You know where um, you know I was talking about the coronavirus, but even this is much more like movie esque in a way where you have this group of friends that just have this tight bond um, that seems really unbreakable. And to be able to experience these memories like state championship in football and then third round of the playoffs in basketball, it it has to be just like almost um, second to none in terms of like how you feel inside being out there on the court with the guys. Yeah, it was just fun. And then also, you know, when like someone's not performing and all that, like we're close enough where you could get in almost a fist fight in practice, but you come out and you still love each other. So like, yeah. it would never got to that fist p- f- fight, but it was like, you gotta get going like, and more like, just keep it going and yeah. work harder because no one cares that you're tired. Well, that's that's what brothers do, right? You know, and they, they get into the fist fight and then an hour later they're having dinner together. So I know firsthand watching you and Luke through the football season. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Chucking footballs at your helmet and stuff like that. That was, uh, Those were interesting times. But nonetheless, it was really cool to see that relationship with all of your friends unfold in just the year that I've been here so far. So um, it wasn't the outcome that you wanted last night. It ended up going to two overtimes, and then um, Brookfield Central went on a little run, and and that was about it. But just as a whole, um, can you just touch on what the message was from Coach Rux and what everyone is taking from the team um, just from the season in general. He was just talking about how um, even with our height, as you, most people would call it a disadvantage, how mm. we made it into an advantage, how we were scrappier, we were better in shape, so the big dudes were gassed. Sometimes there were liabilities. And he was just talking about how in life, 
you're not going to get dealt the same hand as everyone else, but you got to find every opportunity as little ones, little ones. And after a while, they turn into big opportunities. And if you don't grab those, some someone else will. And that makes you, you won't get that opportunity. You won't get that next thing in life that you want, that you work for. And as he was just proud of us that not very many people thought that we were going to get even that close, right. even win. But then we had two opportunities that we just missed. And that's okay, man, because the way I see it is um, what you learned, even though there was a loss, what you learned is more valuable in terms of taking it with you for the rest of your life. And just your ability to um, overcome odds that really were supposed to prevent you from getting to where you ended up. And learning how to do that as a unit when you're um, under really, I'd say undermatched, you know what I mean? Or overmatched, I guess is the right word, but being in a position where people are counting you out and then overcoming that and succeeding is something you can take with you probably for the rest of your life. I think that all started too in football because other than that first round and maybe a little superior, we were counted out because we lost to both teams and we came back and we weren't going to do that again. That's true. I forgot. We were we were underdogs probably most games. I think they even said that superior was supposed to beat us. So other than that first round, we were underdogs for two through five. Wow, that's crazy. And then in the state championship game, obviously, we were underdogs, right? Yep, we were supposed to lose by, I think, the 12. Because Wanaki had been there like nine times or something like that. That was their 10th time. That was our second, so. Wow, and we're 100%. And what's Brookfield Central? (laughs) <laughs> we won't go there. No, we won't go there. <laughs> we don't want to give them any bull too much. Nah, they got, they got us in basketball. That's we, true. That's true. So we'll leave that at that. Well, awesome, man. And, you know, the biggest thing in your life right now is probably your transition from graduating high school, which happens, is it today? No, uh, I'm supposed to graduate. It's March 22nd, okay. which was scheduled the day after state, which is a Sunday, but as of now with this whole pandemic and that uh, school's not gonna be in session for the next couple of weeks, that today will be my last physical day at school. Wow, last day of high school. How do you feel? It's exciting, but knowing that I still have to do work though is like, it's mixed. <laughs> yeah. And like, am I gonna do that work? We will find out later. Yes, but. yes, and that'll be true for probably the rest of your life. Will we do the work? Well, we'll see. Yep. <laughs> So you're going to be last physical day at Brookfield East today. You graduate later in March. And then um, tell the audience what you're getting into now after graduating high school. Uh, I'm joining the Army uh, as a reserve. So it's through the National Guard, all that. It's, I'm really excited because I still have the opportunity to deploy. I'm a one, t- uh, one week in a month, two weeks in the summer. But I still have to go through basic camp, which is... Four we uh, four months. I'm sorry, and mm-hmm. then uh, the opportunity I think is going to be endless. That I'll put myself to the test. I'll put my mind body to limits and see what I can do. Yeah, that's the really cool thing about the military is you're pushed beyond what you think you can do, and what happens is is then when you finish your service and you go into the civilian realm, you are so far ahead of your peers because you've gone to limits that. Um, most likely they haven't been able to push themselves to. And that's really no fault of their own. They just haven't been in an environment that can push them that far. Um, And, you know, most people, I would say, unless you have a lot of family members that are in the Army or whatever, the you're going into the Army. Yes. uh, But whatever branch it is, unless you have a lot of family members there, you probably don't know exactly what you're getting into. I have three cousins who've gone through it. It's all, like, couple last couple of years, but... I I asked them a couple of things that they say that they don't want to ruin it for me, that <laughs> it's the experience within itself. That yeah. They they only say that you'll most likely, you'll hate it when you're down there. You'll find, you'll find some fun parts, but looking back is when you'll really think, like, that was great. Yeah, and you'll probably have some sort of sense of nostalgia where you're going to remember the good times. Um, at least that's how it was for me, where all of the really horrible times, um, for some reason I can't really remember. Um, which I think is just how human beings work. But so, do you know your MOS yet, or any? I'm sort gonna of be an 88 Mike, so truck driver uh, under uh, Coach Layman did that uh, same thing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 88 Mike, Mike. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Looking good, man. Yeah. So, 
do you know exactly whether you'd be working like, have you gotten into, um, you know, are you going to be working with PLS or HETS or any sort of specific vehicles? Um, I had the opportunity, I uh, choosing between two units, one unit, 45 minutes away in Janesville, mm -hmm. was heavy <coughs> HETS, but then I had one in Sussex, which couldn't, I could not let it up because of yeah. the opportunity and there was some extra money involved. So I was like, I'll take this instead Can't because I, that. I'll still have to be trained in the heads and have all that fun. But yeah. Yeah, dude, I remember because our platoon was um, about 40 people strong at its max. And we were in charge of brigade wide movements. And so basically what that means is there was a very small group of people that were in charge of moving a lot of equipment for a lot of other people, um, four or five, six times the amount of people that we had. And so our movements were pretty much nonstop, seven days a week, with these big, uh, for people that don't know, a het is... Within itself, without any lug or like cargo, is an oversized load. Yes, exactly. They, they have tires that are so big that you have to climb a ladder to get to the cockpit of um, in some cases and they're designed to basically roll up basically tanks will roll up on the bed of these trucks you'll strap them down and move where you got to move so if you think of a truck that has the capability to move a tank um, it has to be pretty big so I think I heard that it has like 55 wheels or something so yeah it depends on the type but I know it has a lot of wheels yeah so <laughs> it's it's a lot bigger than an 18 wheeler as most people would see right right exactly what you normally see on the road and then yeah so you'll get really good with strapping things down and um, kind of learning the procedures of convoys I'm sure do you have any part of you that um, is nervous or or scared at all obviously like as it gets closer I'm getting more antsy and more like can I it's like questioning my uh, decisions and all that. Hmm. But I see that I just have a lot of confidence in myself that I've been trained even through all these sports and oh, yeah. mental toughness that I can get through it. And it's just if a lot of other – I just see all these other people getting through it. And I just say, if they can do it, why can't I? They're human just like me. Hmm. I love that. I think that that's such a great thing – a great outlook on any situation and especially somebody like you who is a natural leader and um, bringer of energy to any group that he's a part of so obviously you were one of the leaders of the defense playing linebacker for the football team probably um, the most vocal leader on the team so whenever we would break huddles as a team or whatever you were always giving a speech and that energy is infectious and um, you're right, I've seen people, soldiers that have gone through and been very successful in the Army that haven't done nearly what you have at this point in life. So I would argue that not only are you going to be a successful um, soldier in the Army, but you're going to be having opportunities that I think others won't just because of your infectious personality and your ability to lead. So what that'll mean is rising up the ranks pretty quickly and having the opportunity to probably go to some schools. I don't know if you've talked about... Um, Come back up and maybe Ranger. Oh, okay. Want to go to Hotel Ranger. Okay, I see. That should be a fun eight weeks of straight... If you go straight through. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've heard it takes one or multiple times. Depends. I don't know. You might be able to hit it straight through. You know, athletes and people that are able to work in teams um, usually don't get peered out, you know, because they know how to deal with social circumstances. So... Um, well, that's exciting, man. That's really good. And what do you think the biggest takeaway from your experience here at Brookfield East is that's going to help you in the next phase of your life with the Army? I just think that, yes, like coming to high school, you super uncomfortable getting just whole new scenery, whole new people. And through the years, I've really learned how to communicate, mm -hmm. talk to different types, people with different walks of life. And at first, people, you think that I would never talk to these people. Mm. But you actually, just looking, other than just how people look and, like, how people... I, I just became friends with a lot of people that I have never thought I would talk to, which have actually brought me to be smarter, push myself. Mm. And then I think that's going to help me in the future. That's awesome, man. I think that's exactly what somebody like you in your circumstance should be thinking. And um, I'm really excited for you just... 
on a personal level, having to get to know you as a human being, um, I think you're made for this. I think that you're going to be able to do whatever you want in life. And, um, you know, I always want to be here as a resource to help you out along the way. Um, so hopefully I've done a, an okay job enough to this point. <laughs> Well, but, well, yeah, a lot better than okay. Thank you, I appreciate that. Well, man, I know you have other places to go and people to see, so thank you for doing this. Um, this is the, I guess, officially BEHS Radio number two. We're here with Nick Plemer, um, all-star linebacker, state champion, and uh, six-man extraordinaire on the uh, basketball team, but most importantly, a great human being. So good luck to you in your endeavors, and uh, cool. Luck. Sure. All right. Sure. All right. Take care. What do you think? I thought it was good. Yeah. I thought at first I was kind of like, what's gonna happen? And then yeah. after, like, the first, like...